is happening during this uh, week and the church take us day by day. And today, the day of contrast, two events happen on this day. The first one is the Lord, he was in the house of Simon the liver, and the woman came and poured the fragrant oil on his head. At the same time, the contrast for this act of love and, and reality, Joseph the Iscariot, he went to the chief priest to make a deal with them, what to give him to betray the Lord and to deliver him to them. And the church put these two events in contrast to each other to show that is the difference between the loyalty, the honesty, and the love, and the sacrifice of this woman and the uh, betrayal and dishonesty and the love of money for uh, Judas Iscariot. But also the reading, including the, the story of Mary, the sister of Lazarus, who poured fragrant oil on the feet of the Lord six days before the Passover. This event happened two days before the Passover of today, because the Passover is on uh, Friday. And it is mentioned because uh, uh, Judas was attending at that time. And he criticized Mary about uh, that. And he said that is, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And as the Gospel of St. John explained, that is this, he said, not he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used it to take uh, what was put in it. So we have two, two, two women, Mary, which bought the fragrant oil on the uh, feet of the Lord. That was in six days before the Passover, and it happened in the house of Lazarus in Bethany also. And Judas attended this. But, but the, the other woman, which we don't know her name, it was not mentioned, which happened two days before the Passover and happened in the house of Simon the liberal. And Judas did not attend, but the disciples, they said similar things, what he said in the previous event. That is why uh, this waste. We have a third woman, which also poured the fragment oil on the feet of the Lord, uh, which is mentioned in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter uh, seven, but in, con uh, in different contexts. That's happened in the house of Simon the Pharisee and this woman who came behind the Lord and she washed his feet with her tears, wiped with her hair and put a fragment of oil. And the criticism came from Simon about how he allowed her to touch him while he, she, is, she is a sinner and the Lord forgive her sin. So just to know the different three stories of the woman, but the focus today is about uh, the woman and uh, who poured the fragrant oil in, in this day, Wednesday, uh, two days before the Passover. And the church put this to see the, uh, the difference between the two. That's why uh, the, the psalm of the third hour it is about uh, Joseph saying his words are were smoother than oil, yet are they so, uh, songs or, or parts. Uh, and we have the same uh, psalm also with this long uh, hymn to, tomorrow uh, in the first hour of the Good Thursday. Because in, as you will watch, as you follow tomorrow morning, in the first hour, there is a special hymn to uh, rebuke the betrayal of Judas the Iscariot. And the church put us these two uh, events 
to remind us how to be loyal to our Lord Jesus Christ, how to express our love to him. And uh, this sacrifice of this woman that was given, that is what she did to be uh, mentioned in wherever the gospel is, uh, is preached as a memorial for, memorial for her. And also the same gospel of this woman, of Wednesday, is read in the funeral of woman. The funeral of woman, we read the same uh, gospel because to tell that is this departed woman is like this woman, she offered the costly flying that is her life to, uh, to the Lord. So this is the first contrast which we have on this day between uh, the woman, Mary, and Judas. The second contrast is between uh, the relationship of the Lord Jesus Christ to Judas Iscariot and the relationship of Satan to Judas Iscariot. And because it is mentioned about Judas the Iscariot, that is, Satan entered him twice. Entered him twice. The first one mentioned in Luke uh, chapter 22, verse 3, and then Satan entered Judas, surname Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and comforted with the chief priest and captain how he might betray him to them. The second time, which is mentioned about that is Satan entered uh, Judas, this is in, in June, uh, in, in the Gospel of St. John, uh, chapter 15, 26. Now, after the piece of bread, after the Lord gave him the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. St. Augustine explained this, and how Satan entered him twice. He said that Satan, Satan first entered Judas when he planned in his heart to betray his Lord. It was an idea as a plan. And in, in this spirit, he came to the Last Supper. But after he reached for the bread, the devil no longer tempted Judas as a disciple of Christ, but took a position of Judas as his own. And the first thing he put front him was just a plan. But after that, after he met uh, the Lord, and, and the Lord uh, told him about what he was going to do, then, but he continued in his plan. Now, the, uh, the devil took a position of him. Like ideas, when, when ideas come to us from the devil, and we accept this idea, or this ideas, and then after that we work on this to, to move it from just thoughts to actions. So like it's two phases when the, when the devil to control a person started by the mind because usually the, the 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 devil attacks the mind of the person because the devil knows that is the center of our own action is our mind anything we do is based on an idea come to our mind so usually attack uh, us and our mind by different sorts and if we accept these thoughts, then the devil entered with us. And if we move to promote these thoughts into action and even defend these thoughts, then it's taken a position on, on us, like what happened to Judas. And if somebody has thoughts about God and the existence of God, he may reject these thoughts and there's no sin here, or may accept this thought and start to believe on that there is no God. And then he moved to action to behave in his life as if there is no God, there is no judgment, there is 
will not give it account and maybe move more and more to defend the source and spread this this uh, uh, different source. On the opposite side, and that's what devil uh, did for, for Satan, and led him to, to destruction. And when he accepted Satan, then what is the outcome of that? It ended by his, his destruction, as we will see later on. On the other hand, the Lord reached out to Judas in many ways, but unfortunately, Judas rejected the Lord. So he chose him one of the 12 apostles and sent him a mission to serve. He also, Judas, listened to the teaching of the Lord. He saw many miracles of him. And not only that, but the Lord also assigned him for very specific service, that is to be responsible for the money box. And this money box was with a, with a disciple to cover any expenses they are need and also to help the poor. But he was not honest in taking care of this uh, box, money box, but as mentioned in the Hawaii, he was a thief. And the Lord, of course, he knew that. It was not hidden from the Lord to know that this Judas was not honest. But he did not punish him. He did not remove him from uh, this responsibility. He left him. And we can wonder why. And why the Lord leave him? Because there was something more serious coming to this man more than just this money mistaken. And if the Lord punished him, he may, might, mustn't find, this is excuse for him to betray the Lord as a revenge. But the Lord moved with him not on the second mile, but even the tenth mile, as we will see more. He washed his feet because he was among uh, the other the, was the disciple who attended the washing of the feet and the last supper. And, and the Lord warned him. Yeah, the, the plot of, of, of Judas depended on to be secret. Because the Lord, they didn't know where he, where he is going to be. And that's why they make this deal with one who is in the close circle of the Lord. So it, the, the, all the plot is, is based on to be a secret, so the Lord not, not to know. But the Lord revealed to him, that is, he, he knew what he was planning to do, and in very clear language. So maybe he changed his mind and find that his, his blood was discovered and, and, and repent. So after washing the feet of his disciple, he said, you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. And also he said, most assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And he gave uh, an indication who this it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot. It's very clear. He told them who the one, because they asked it. When he said, one of you will betray me. So that starts, the disciples started to ask. And John, he asked the Lord about him. So the Lord told them very clearly who is going to betray him. Then he told him, what you do, do quickly. Of course, he's not ordering him to do this, but just like uh, evaluate, return to yourself for what I will do. In the, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, it is mentioned now, as they were eating, he said, as surely I say to you, 
one of you will betray me. And each one of the disciples asked, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. And he said, It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Uh, but Judas asked, Rabbi, is it I? Then he said to him, you have said it. And I think it's very clear what is the Lord said to him. And when he came with uh, uh, soldiers uh, to, to seize the Lord, the Lord asked him and said to him, friend, and still calling him friend, friend, why you have come? And when he kissed him, he told him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? And that's why the church differentiates between the kiss of love and the kiss of, uh, of uh, hypocrisy and betrayal, which uh, that is Judas. So at the end, like what Adam and Eve did when they rejected the Lord, rejected his commandment and accepted the idea of the devil. And the devil, when came speaking to the servant, he attacked the mind of Eve and Adam regarding the reason of the commandment. He didn't go by attracting them to the tree, but firstly attacked the idea why God give you this commandment. He told them that is God will not surely die. It is not a matter of protection you because God told him when you eat from this tree you will be surely die. Which means I want to protect you from dying. But the devil came through the serpent telling no, you will not surely die. But God knows that when you eat from this tree, it will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the purpose of the commandment is not your protection, but the purpose is to protect himself, God to protect himself from you to be like him. And they accepted this idea. And, and because they accepted the idea, then they look to the tree in different way. They find it attractive, uh, to, to say it, uh, delicious to eat from it, and so on. And uh, what is the end? The end is they lost. They were created in the image of God, and they lost it. The same also, what is the fate of Judas when he followed the devil? He lost everything. He lost of the Lord. He lost the money, which he took the three pieces even a small amount of money, yes, he, 30 pieces, the 30 pieces of silver, that is, he went and threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and he lost his life because he committed suicide. Even he repented, and Judas repented. But his repentant, repentance lacked the hope for acceptance. He felt what he did was wrong. He correct by giving the money back. Of course, he could not correct uh, the grains at all. But at least he repented. And this is different between him and St. Peter. And St. Peter, he did also very yeah, bad things. He would like the Lord seven times. But he repented. But he had hope. He had hope that is to be accepted. Judas he did not have this hope, and that's why he commits suicide. Because commit suicide means there is no hope. And people who commit suicide, because to re they reach a stage when they have no hope, and they think that is getting uh, out, getting out of their life, that is that is a solution. But it was not a solution for Judas, because the beginning of trouble for him. In, in eternity, and he lost also his eternal, his eternal uh, life. So therefore, the, the, the lesson for us is to learn from Mary and from this woman 
how to offer our love to, to the world and to be uh, careful about the deception of the devil when it comes in, uh, and to, to our mind with many thoughts. We have to be very careful, especially when some thoughts coming as if something good. Uh, and and also uh, to to be care, to to be aware about the great love of God, even with Judas, even with Judas, God showed him a, a great a great love uh, uh, toward him. But unfortunately, he, he God never forced himself on anybody. He offered warm advice that was also accept or not, uh, not to accept. And the church will remind us about Judas, right, what he represent, and to be very careful about, at the end, he lost everything as we mentioned. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to save us and offer himself as a sacrifice for our salvation, to uh, make us fiery in loving him and willing to sacrifice and offer all our life to him to whom is glory now and